Hey everybody and welcome back to some more Oxygen Not Included. It's cycle 237 with the Impenetrable Gang. And in the last episode, we finally found our first natural gas geyser over here in the bottom right hand corner of the map. And so one of the very first things that I would like to do in today's episode is dig down and try and get over to this natural gas geyser. I am gonna set a priority eight dig over here so that hopefully our duplicates will come down and, uh, and gain access to the geyser. Now, I believe we do have to scan it. Yes, there is an analyze button down here. We need to send a researcher to gather data about the geyser. And unfortunately, I think that does take quite a while to complete. And so I don't know if we're gonna actually be able to do anything with the natural gas in today's episode, but never fear i do have a, an alternate plan for what i want to do in today's episode but before we get to that i have added a couple of mods to the game since the end of the last episode they're mostly just quality of life mods and one of them you may have noticed already uh, the mod allows me to zoom out further than you normally could so we can actually get to like this point here without having to click alt and s previously you could only zoom out maybe about this far it might have been like here maybe but it was pretty like limited you could only zoom out about this far before the game didn't allow you to zoom out any further. I'm not quite sure why. You could still zoom out further, but you'd have to press Alt S and then zoom out more. Now I don't have to do that. I can just zoom out and in as I like, which is pretty nice. I've also added a mod that revamps the gas overlay here. So if I click on the gas overlay, we can now more clearly see what gases are where. Whereas previously, as you can see on the right hand side here, the overlay would just show you whether or not an area was breathable, not necessarily what gas was in that area. Whereas now we can more easily see that oxygen is blue, carbon dioxide is black, uh, polluted oxygen is yellow, natural gas is orange, hydrogen is pink, and then chlorine is green. So it's a lot more similar to how the gases look in the real world as opposed to the previous overlay. It's not a huge deal, but it just makes things a little bit easier to work with. On top of that, I have also added in uh, the one and only mod that's not just like a quality of life improvement, and that is the wallpaper mod that allows us to put down custom wallpapers to cover up pipes and essentially just cover up the back of the game. You'll notice right now there's no real way to kind of cover up the space i don't know what it actually is behind us here but essentially if i go ahead and grab this here depending on what you build the wallpaper out of it will appear a different color and i'll put the overlay up on screen to show you what all of the different colors are for all of the different materials but for now if we did something like maybe granite i'm only thinking granite because we've got 393,000 kilograms of granite as opposed to uh some of the other colors like i was thinking copper but we've only got just over a thousand copper so maybe not the best idea for us here but if we go ahead and we make it out of granite real quick this is going to give us a nice kind of dark gray look and i think i might put this in our research room here and so essentially the sound is horrible but if we do something like that our duplicates will come over they'll start delivering granite and they'll start building in these back tiles here and it just makes our rooms look a little bit nicer there's no practical use for it i don't even think that they increase the decor of the area let me uh, check that though real quick um, oh no, it does, plus 20%. Okay, so it does also increase the decor of the area, which I guess is also uh, quite nice. Although it is quite resource intensive, uh, five kilograms per tile there is uh, is a little much, but it makes it look a little bit nicer. Uh, and it does cover up any liquid pipes or gas pipes or electrical wire that you have in that particular room. And of course, it's not limited to rooms. You can build it any way you like, but I think it's just going to add a nice bit of uh, flavor, a nice bit of uh, flair to our base. We might even go ahead and maybe throw down some, uh, do we have some iron? We've got sandstone. Coal also looks pretty good, but we don't really have that much coal. We've got a bit of iron ore, but really not much. But let's see here. Do I have enough to fill, for example, our medical room? I don't. Okay, well, we'll do... I'll cancel a bit of that, and we'll just have, like, a little bit of the wall code here, just to kind of give you an idea of what that's going to look like. But nevertheless, what I want to work on in today's episode, now that we've got that out of the way, and also, actually, I should point out uh, one more thing. I've also enabled demug mode in the game. Uh, the reason I've done that is that now, if I press Alt and Z, and I'll zoom out real quick so you guys can see it in action, but if I click Alt and Z, the duplicates go into super speed. So we've got speed one, speed two, speed three, and then super speed, which as we get further and further into the game is going to be more useful for us. The colony is at a point now where the risk of things going badly is not particularly high. It's not likely that we're going to run out of food. Um, as of yesterday, oxygen is doing really, really well. You'll notice now that we are actually producing more oxygen than we're using and have been for a couple of cycles now since we got our new system actually up and running. And so the odds of things going wrong are quite low. And so the risk of running the base at a really, really fast speeds are also quite low. And especially with things like this down here that could take a little bit of time for our duplicates to actually get up and running 
it's going to be a lot easier for us to deal with stuff like this if we have access to that super speed so that we're not just waiting for our duplicates to get down to this lower level uh, because quite a lot of the past two episodes has been me rambling on whilst waiting for duplicates to do fairly menial tasks so uh, apparently they cannot de uh, build there that's fine we'll build across like that and then have them uh, dig to get down i might have to reorganize our dig build a little bit here so they can get down like that they should be able to get down there and then they should be able to make their way over there i think they can get to that geyser now so i'll go ahead and i'll set this to priority eight so that somebody will uh, come down and get that done and i'll also go ahead and click the uh analyze button which has already been clicked and i will schedule these as priority eights as well so whilst they're doing that and whilst they're analyzing the geyser what do i want to work on in today's episode well i would like to try and get our plastic production back up and running we set this up a few episodes back and the setup is very bad to put it bluntly but um, really, it's just kind of rudimentary, right? It's just a very basic setup that takes the oil, pumps it into the refinery, takes the petroleum that comes out of that and pumps it into the polymer press, and then uses the natural gas that comes from the oil refinery to power a natural gas generator. And I think I'm going to remove pretty much all of this and rebuild this elsewhere. So looking at the numbers, we can see that the polymer press uses 833.33 grams per second of petroleum. And if we look at the oil refinery, this guy produces 5 kilograms or 5,000 grams of petroleum per second meaning that we can effectively run six polymer presses off of one oil refinery provided that the oil refinery is constantly being tended to it's constantly being used by a duplicate because this does need uh, a duplicate to manually turn the wheel to actually produ produce that petroleum uh, but given that that is the case we can run a maximum of six polymer presses off of one oil refinery now the polymer presses as we mentioned the last time we were here are very very hot you'll see that they output 32.5 thousand dtus per second which again for reference if we look at the oil refinery this guy outputs 10,000, so more than three times that and then uh, last episode our coal generators were getting a little bit hot and if we look at these guys they produce 9,000 dtus per tick so the polymer press produces almost four coal generators worth of heat on its own and so if we want the polymer press to run consistently we're gonna have to figure out a way to cool this down and i think i'm gonna try once again to tap into our anti-entropy thermo nullifier to make this happen now the thermo nullifier can negate eighty thousand dtus per second of heat and so if we had all six of these i think we would still be producing too much heat to take care of for our you know thermo nullifier to handle but we can make two and could maybe get away with three of these polymer presses going at one at any given time and maybe use the anti-entropy thermal nullifier to nullify that heat and so essentially what i'm thinking guys is if we go ahead and we delete this tile here which i am going to go ahead and learn from my past mistakes and specify that i just want to delete the tile not the pipes or the wiring underneath it and we're going to dig down a little bit like this and we're going to build a little room under here for our polymer press so we're going to go down a couple of tiles the polymer press is i think three tiles high right no it's only two tiles high okay so we'll go I think a room like this might be fine, but just to be on the safe side, I'll go ahead and go one tile wider and we'll do something like this. Now, this room, I believe, does have space for up to six polymer presses, like one, two, three, four, five. Oh, we could go one further over. So this room has space for five polymer presses. Again, we're probably not going to run five polymer presses in this room simply due to the fact that five polymer presses would produce a ridiculous amount of heat that right now we cannot deal with. And so for now, I'm going to put an airlock down right about there. We're going to dig out everything in this room like so. And I think temporarily we will go ahead and build three polymer presses i will build them right next to each other like this just so that if we want to we could potentially add two more on the end here later on down the line but my plan is essentially to do something fairly similar to what we've got going on up here and that is to run the radiant gas pipes in a radiator fashion like we've got up here through this room cooling down the room and cooling down the polymer presses and i think we can probably change this setup up here like right now i think that there is potentially an excessive amount of pipe for cooling our oxygen we don't need the oxygen to really be that cold and so what i'm thinking is of having the oxygen simply go up and across and then out instead of having this zigzaggy pattern and then instead having another loop that is full of hydrogen that zigzags through this room in like the remaining space so we're going to have two different gases moving through this room in different pipes and create kind of like a closed loop system that is full of hydrogen thus allowing the maximum amount of thermal conductivity thermal change uh, through 
hydrogen being the best for that. So we'll have hydrogen gas in here. We're going to try and fill this room with hydrogen gas as well. And then we're also going to have hydrogen gas in the pipes. And that hydrogen gas is going to get cooled down in here. It's going to come into here. It's going to suck up as much of that heat as it possibly can. And then it's going to go back through to here and hopefully release all of that heat that then gets nullified by the thermo nullifier. That's the plan. Whether or not it works out as well as I'm envisioning, we will see. But for now, we can go ahead and uh, get a head start on this, I think, by kind of setting up something that looks a little bit like this. We do, of course, have to fill this room with hydrogen at some point, but I think we can do that fairly easily by just sticking a vent down like here and having this hydrogen that's currently going over to the uh, hydrogen generator. And you'll see it is backing up quite a bit. Uh, but if we have that hydrogen instead come into this room, that should work out just fine. It is entirely possible that we might have to pump some of the gas that's in here right now, some of the polluted oxygen out of this room. Just like before, we're going to go ahead and have our pipe continue on up here. I guess at this point, uh, after this bit, we probably don't need to have radiant pipe. And in fact, it might not be a bad idea to use insulated pipe going all the way up here, just in case like this area gets quite hot and ends up, you know, heating up too much over time. So we'll have insulated pipe continue on up like this and then there's not much we can do on this side until we redo this pipe right here so essentially what i am thinking is if we go ahead and we get rid of all of these pipes here we can then instead just have pipes run along the top like so and i think that will be more than enough to cool down the oxygen enough from the temperature that comes out of the electrolyzer for you know, human consumption. It's not going to be coming out over here at like 70 degrees Celsius. It's going to be coming out a little closer to uh, to room temperature, but that's fine. We really don't need it to be too cold coming out on this side. I would much rather use that to try and cool down some of our polymer presses. And the natural geyser has been analyzed. Oh my goodness, I thought it was going to take a lot longer. So right now, the geyser is dormant. The geyser's geoactivity has been halted. The analysis has been complete. So this guy outputs 341 grams per second at 150 degrees Celsius. And... Its eruption period is 362 seconds every 743 seconds. So approximately once every day, a day is 600 seconds. So just over once every day, it will start erupting for about half a day, is, is I believe what that means there. And then its activation period is 88.3 cycles every 141 cycles, meaning that once every 141 cycles, it will then begin erupting for 88.3 cycles. And so you can see from this that this guy does not pump out natural gas all of the time. And this takes me to the other mod, the final mod, I believe, that I've added uh, between episodes. And that is the calculated average output for geysers mod. Uh, and this mod allows us to essentially figure out, on average, how much natural gas this thing produces. And this guy produces 104.24 grams per second. So it does technically output 341.3, but it only does that for 88 cycles every 141 cycles. So we're going to get a huge influx of natural gas for 88 cycles, but then there's going to be, you know, 60 cycles where there's no natural gas. And so averaging that out, we get about 104 grams per second, which as it turns out is not really that much. I was actually kind of hoping for, uh, for much more natural gas. If we look at the natural gas generator again in the database here, this guy requires, I believe it's 90 grams per second of natural gas. And so really in the long run, we can only run about one natural gas generator off of the natural gas from this geyser, which I guess is still pretty good. That's still a free 800 watts of power for essentially nothing, just for building this into a box and pumping the natural gas out of it. Uh, the downside is that we are going to have to store if we want to, you know, consistently produce power, because of course, what we don't want to do is use all of the natural gas from the guys right away, like to power like six generators for 88 cycles, and then go 60 cycles without any power whatsoever. You know, we don't want our base just grinding to a halt because the guys goes dormant. I think what would be a more sensible thing to do would be to have all of the natural gas stored up in the reservoirs and then slowly feeding one natural gas generator consistently because we know thanks to the av average output here that we can run one natural gas generator forever so long as we can store the gas now i'm gonna have to crunch some numbers on that because that's a lot of gas and i don't know just how many reservoirs we might need to store 88.3 cycles worth of natural gas you know for, for later use that might not be possible depending on 
how many got how many reservoirs that needs although i guess if we needed to we could set up a big old bank of reservoirs kind of low down here and, and try and make that happen but for now i'm going to continue to focus on plastic we'll come back to that i think in the next episode so they've managed to build all of the polymer presses and also all of the radio most of the radiant gas pipes right now uh, they can't get through here because these doors are locked which is something that i would like to keep going i don't want to get any of the gases into my electrolyzer setup and so for the time being i think i'm going to go ahead and dig out some of this abyssalite and have our duplicates ladder down on the right hand side here so that they can you know build stuff that they need to build over on the right hand side of the base and so continuing on where we left off here we're essentially going to run this across up this is still uh, oh no this is not insulated pipe we want to make sure that that is insulated like so we're gonna have this go up here up here and then of course we're gonna have a gas bridge like so and then from here we're gonna go back to radiant pipe so that we can cool off as much of the temperature as possible and i think we might even go and do something like this because we are going to be outputting quite a large amount of heat here especially if these guys are running all the time and then we'll go across to here and then we'll go back to insulated pipe like so and we'll have that run down across the gas bridge like so and then back over and into there now uh, there is a slight problem here and that problem is that we are gonna have to get rid of a few of these pipes because i'm a fool because as far as I'm aware, you actually can't have just a closed gas loop that doesn't go anywhere. The gas won't move of its own accord. I think what we have to do is put down a reservoir right about here so that the gas actually has somewhere to go. So that it can go in here and then out like this. Otherwise, I don't think that we can actually get a loop going. But I think if we put a reservoir there, that should work. Let's also think about how am I going to get rid of this? I could put and I might put some airflow tiles here. And then just start, although this is quite dense. I was going to say we could put some airflow tiles in here and then just start pumping hydrogen in, which would then push the uh, the oxygen down. But there's already quite a bit of breathable oxygen in here. And so I think what I might just do, for now at least, is just get a pump and just start pumping out all of the, I'll put it right in the bottom corner so that as we start putting hydrogen in it, we'll get rid of the oxygen first. And then we'll just have, for now, this guy, I guess just pump, I guess we can't build it here because there's a, a pipe there. I guess we're going to build it here so that it doesn't touch the pre-existing pipe and then we want that ventilation preferably to go up to here so we can actually like get rid of the gases but i guess for now we can just store do i want to build yet another reservoir we've got so many <laughs> reservoirs over here already but i don't really want this pipe to be that long but you know what sure we'll do it like this we'll go across we'll go over and we'll go up this is a very temporary setup like that and then like that and this guy's gonna go up and over another pipe and into here like that and then if this gets full we can always just go ahead and delete it and then put it back down again that is going to give us a bunch of gas canisters but we can deal with that when the time comes and that should hopefully allow us to get most if not all of the polluted oxygen out of the room here and the next thing that we need to worry about here is power because each of these uses 240 watts worth of power so we might not even end up having all three of these online right now but if we're going to run these and we're also going to run the oil refinery which requires another uh, i think it's 480 watts of power it might not be a bad idea to look into upgrading our power wires and there is a new research that we've not yet done which is low resistance conductors which unlocks the conductive wire that unlike the basic wire can transfer up to 2000 watts worth of power before the wire begins to overload and it also unlocks us a new higher voltage transformer that can also send 2000 watts worth of power and so i'm thinking what i might do is put yet another transformer on the bottom line here and then have a 2000 watt wire that runs all the way across the base to this area pretty much solely to power our refinery and our polymer presses and then maybe one or two other things uh, along the way as well like maybe our fertilizer synthesizers can uh, can hop on that that wire just so that we can kind of free up this wire a little bit to provide power to these uh, these other parts of the base but for now, we will uh, go ahead and Alt-Z real quick so we can try and get some of this stuff built a little bit faster. They should... Oh, no, we do need to put down one more mesh tile. And by mesh tile, I mean insulator tile right about here. I keep saying mesh tile, but I mean insulator tile. But we need to put that there so they can actually uh, get through here. Uh, we are losing hydrogen out of this room, but I think that's fine. At this point in time, most of the rooms on either side are still full of hydrogen, so I don't think we're losing that much anymore. And let's take a quick look at our oxygen. So right now, it's coming in at 20 Celsius... Yeah, it's coming out here at 20 as well. And then by the time it gets over here, it's down to 4.9, 5 degrees Celsius, 5.4. Yeah, I think that's fine. 
That's not anywhere near as cold as, you know, the negative fives that we had before, but it's more than cold enough to still bring down the overall temperature of this area over here, which is still, uh, you know, closer to 20 degrees Celsius. And so I think that's fine. That's, that, that's more than fine, you know, and especially once we start pumping the hydrogen through here, we're probably going to want to change the thermo sensor to be as cold as it can get and like negative 271 because we really want it cooling down the hydrogen as much as possible to make sure that it can keep up with our uh, with our polymer presses. So I will go ahead and clear out some area over here as well because this is where I'm thinking of putting the uh, refinery right about here. Although, now that I think about it, the refinery doesn't actually output, if I'm not mistaken, any gases that are not in, in a pipe. It outputs petroleum and it outputs natural gas, but the natural gas is sent via a pipe, so we, it doesn't just like output into the world. We can actually just pump it on a way. It does output it into the air. Essentially, what I'm thinking here is that I'm thinking I probably want to have the refinery prior to the AtmoSuit dock, because if we can have the refinery on the other side of the AtmoSuit dock, that means that our duplicants can use it for a longer period of time. Otherwise, they're limited by how much you know oxygen they have. Although... They do have quite a bit of oxygen in their tanks, and so maybe it might just work having this here. And given that we only have three of these, what we can probably do is simply have the oil refinery connected up to a uh, fluid or liquid reservoir, and then we only have to have a duplicate running this half of the day in order to provide all three of these polymer presses with enough petroleum to make endless plastic. So, sure, I think I will go and put it here, and we'll see how well that works. We can always move it if they're not, you know, staying long enough to actually get anything done. But I think this should be fine. So I'm going to put it right about there. It, of course, does need tile below it. And again, we are going to make that out of mesh tile because this guy does get real hot. And actually thinking about it, I probably want to move it back by one. So like right here, just so we have space for that liquid reservoir, like so. And again, hopefully, oh, I should check real quick, though, because this guy outputs so much petroleum like five kilograms per second is is that right five kilograms per second that's like an insane amount of petroleum yeah five kilograms of petroleum per second how much oil does that take surely that's quite a bit of oil actually that requires 10 kilograms per second of crude oil and so real quick actually i don't know how much this guy can can move per second the pump can move 10 kilograms per second so i think what we're going to do is we're going to dig over to maybe this body of, of crude oil. We do have this one that we could uh, tap into for now, but I think moving it over to here is going to give us a slightly more consistent supply of oil, at least for a little while. And you'll see there is a lot of oil here, you know, 3,000 kilograms just in that one tile alone. But my real concern was how much the liquid reservoirs can hold. These can hold five tons, so 5,000 kilograms, which I think is fine. If the other guy outputs five kilograms per second and there are 600 seconds, that's 3,000 kilograms. And so we only ever need half of it in the reservoir at one time anyway. So this guy's only going to produce a maximum of three tons worth of um, petroleum in a day anyway. And we're going to be using half of that in the polymer presser. Yes, the short answer is that the liquid reservoir has more than enough storage in it to uh, for our purposes here. So that is completely fine. We will continue to... Uh, to build. Uh, this is ready to go, but we do need the research to complete. Uh, the research is very almost done, so once we uh, get started with cycle 243, Stinky should be uh, out of bed and ready to get work going again. The research is now done, and so if we come back all the way over here, we can go ahead and throw down a power transformer, a large power transformer, which hopefully is not physically bigger. It is, but that's still fine because we can put it right about there. We are going to have to move our... Actually, hold on real quick. The maximum safe wattage of our carbon scanner is 1,000 watts. Is the maximum safe wattage of the refinery still also 1,000 watts? I think it might be, which means I think we might have to have a, like a large transformer here, then a 2,000 watt wire that goes all the way over to here, and then at some point over here have one or two standard transformers that then down watt the wire to where it's actually usable by our uh, by our machines. That's fine if that's the case. It's just a little bit more a little bit more work and it also means that we might have to do some uh, bridging here. Like have a uh, conductive wire bridge right about there. Although that doesn't seem to work. Why is that not allowed? Oh, is it because that's like it has to, oh, so we'd have to do it like this and then have the conductive wire like that. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, the hardest part is going to be getting the wire across because there is already wiring in the floor. Although I guess we can go ahead and delete this wiring here. Like, yeah, that is going to disconnect our carbon skimmer, but that's fine. Actually, I'll come back to that. So I'm going to cancel this um, 
bridge for now. And I'm also going to dig up these power wires. We'll come back and, uh, and reassess the carbon skimmer in a little while now. I think for the time being, it's done a pretty good job of uh, lowering the amount of carbon dioxide in this area over here. It's now nowhere near as bad as it, uh, as it once was. So for now, I think that's fine. Uh, I'll actually go ahead and move that down by one in that case so that it's actually on firm ground. We'll put it right about there. And then once all of this wire is deleted, we'll replace it with the conductive wire, which is going to go all the way through down here. Again, I guess we'll go that way for now. Across here, uh, that does incidentally cross this pneumatic door, but that's fine. It's not too big of a deal. And then we'll go up. We will go around here. We'll just dig out this uh, these tiles and replace them back down once the, uh, once the wire is in. And we have reached the point where we now need more metal to get this going. So... This is one of those situations where we should probably now look into putting down the metal refinery. The metal refinery requires 1.2 kilowatts, 1,200 watts worth of power to get this thing going. That's a crazy amount of power and does produce quite a lot of heat, but it does not output any gases. I think it does, however, require a coolant of sorts, although maybe that's only required if you run it consistently. I think for now, I'm going to put this guy like over here. As always, that is a very temporary positioning just because there's power wire here and there's wattage available. Um, although that's not going to work, right? Because it needs more than a thousand watts and this can only provide a thousand watts. So that is not going to work. In that case, can we just put it like... Hold on, let me get that back again. Can I just put it like here and then connect it with heavy watt wire? Does that work? I'm going to build it there and we'll see what happens. I would like to know what the... Um, like maximum wattages for a machine like this, it might annoyingly require 1,200 watts of power, but then not be able to take the 20 kilowatts that the heavy watt wire sends in. I think that's very likely. And so I think it's quite likely here that we need to have a transformer in place. I'm going to try real quick. I'm going to get the, I'm going to cancel some of this conductive wire over here just so that we can actually put some down over on this side. Uh, and I'm missing quite a bit of it, actually. So if I cancel yet more, there we go. So if we try and do something like this, that's just going to burn out this wire here. Let me... Okay, let's try instead using heavy watt wire like this. I have a feeling that is definitely not going to work. I think that's going to be too many watts for this machine. Um, it does also say a waiting coolant, no liquid output, no wire connection, and no liquid intake. So it does definitely require some form of coolant. I don't think... He said very unconvincingly that this actually pollutes the water. I think it just heats the water up because he didn't say that the output was polluted water. It just said the output was water. Now, annoyingly, we don't actually have a setup in place to, um, to work with that. We can reconnect this pipe here. Although I guess, actually, what I might do is, just in case the water is hot, and we probably don't want the hot water being pumped into our base, what we'll do is we'll throw down a reservoir right about here for now. Again, very temporary setup. We'll set up a more permanent setup with this guy um, later on down the line. For now, I just want to get these wires up and running. And then we'll have the water from... I was going to say here. And yeah, we can make that work. We'll have the water from here go across and into this. And then we'll have the water that comes out of there just go directly into the reservoir for now. And then we'll figure out what we're going to do with that hot water in the future. Yes. We'll see how that works. Again, I would like this to be heavy watt wire, even though I'm still not convinced that, that is going to work either, but we'll see how that goes. We do need to reconnect up uh, a pipe over here, so something like this and like this. That's going to allow uh, the water from our water sieve to actually go over uh, into this guy. Uh, right now, it's working on just the water from the pipe, so we do need to connect those back up for this to work. And once this is set up, I guess we'll find out whether or not this heavy watt wire is going to work. If it's not going to work, we um, we could be in for some issues. But long term, I think this is going to be one of those things where we do want to try and cool down the water. You know, like have it go in, cool it down, and then repump it around. And if we can get like a self-circulating system, kind of like what we've got going on over here, um, it might work out just fine. For now, I think I will just kind of hitch onto the pre-existing wire network just so I can get the uh, the gas moving here because I don't want to wait too long for this to, uh, to get going. I want to get all of the gas out of this room and get the hydrogen in there. Uh, you know, sooner rather than later. So we'll build this. Uh, that does mean I'm going to have to put down a door over on this side. That's fine. We'll schedule a deletion there. We'll put a door there, uh, thus allowing our duplicates into this side, but still keeping this room here free of anything that's not specifically what we're after. Right now, this seems okay, but it is entirely possible that as soon as we start making this, that we um, 
that we run out. It does require 100 kilograms per piece here. How much gold do we have? We've got a lot more gold than we do copper right now. We've also got a fair bit of um, wolframite, but I think we'll make this out of gold. I don't love it, but I think it is going to work for now. This looks like it's 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 fine. No liquid output. I think that's okay. I don't think it matters if the um, if the reservoir doesn't have an output. I think it should still you know function just fine. So let's see. This should be automated. So they should just come and dump the gold ore in here, and then the work should kind of be taken care of on its own. I don't believe that a duplicate has to uh, manually kind of babysit this machine. And boom. Okay, so that is working. It says work errand. Oh, there's, it needs a duplicate. Okay, so it does actually require a duplicate to make this work. All right, that's fine. Yeah, there we go. Not great. I would have preferred it if it was if it was automatic, of course. But this is fine. If it requires a duplicate, it requires a duplicate. That is a okay. How are we actually doing in terms of plastic right now? I don't actually know where plastic is. It's under manufactured material. I've got 30 kilograms of plastic. How much plastic does it take for like a, uh, a plastic ladder? 50. So we don't have, we've yet to get enough plastic to make a plastic ladder, which uh, should show you just how much plastic we need. We also don't have enough plastic uh, even to make a bed, which also requires 200 kilograms of uh, plastic there. So that's um, kind of the reason why we're doing what we're doing over here. The pipe is now online and we're slowly but surely emptying this room out of um, polluted oxygen. It's doing a pretty good job. There's actually not much polluted oxygen left in here. And so I guess at this point, we can go ahead and figure out where we're going to put this vent. And I think this room is probably empty enough now. Like 35 grams is very low. So let's come in and let's uh, have our duplicates delete all of this uh, all of this wiring here, uh, all of this gas piping even. So we'll delete all this. Whilst we're at it, I'll also make sure to clean up after myself and delete like this and this and these wires and this and this. Actually, I guess we can leave the last two there just in case we want to hook something else back up to that in the future. But we'll delete this. We'll put a vent down right about here. And for now, we're going to disconnect the, uh, the hydrogen generator and have all of the hydrogen that comes from the electrolyzer that's not going into the nullifier going into this room right here. So ventilation, gas vent. I guess we'll do it here and we'll delete this and then just have the pipe go down like so. That might take a little while to fill up, which is why I kind of want to get it done sooner rather than later.